Okay, in this video, uh, where we left off was we had finished explaining the struct and how it was being populated. Now we're going to explain how to properly label the struct so that it actually makes sense. So what you want to do is you're going to go and click the Structures tab, and then you're going to go to the Edit menu in Ida Pro, and you're going to click Add Struct Type. And we're going to call this Person. And then you're going to hit OK. Now, what's interesting is Ida Pro, at least the newest version here, it recognized this that I had a person struct here somehow from the source code or from um, some data in memory. And it actually populated it for me. But assuming it didn't do this, I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. So I'm going to just define another structure, and then you can see sort of how this is done. So what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to do add struct type and we're just going to call ours struct2 so that it doesn't do that. And all you do is you come in here after the struct beginning label like this and you just modify where it says ends and you add some data. So let's say we need to add uh, the name the character array for name. So you right click it and then you say array and then you say array size 50 items on a line I'm just gonna leave it like that like that and then what you can do is you can where it says field 0 you can hit N and write in their name so see how that we basically just recreated what the Ida Pro already did now what you're going to do is for the next slot, you're going to add in age, which is an integer. So this is actually even easier. All you do is you hit the D key on the keyboard with that line selected. And we're going to move that to DD for age. And then we're going to name it age. And now we're going to come down here, and I think you can actually use the, let's see, we need to define, oh, we need to define hair color, which is another character array. So once again, we can do exactly what we did before. I think we just right-clicked it, clicked array, oops, click array, and then this time we have size 10, boom. So that's it. So we've now created our own struct that we can now reference inside of the program in this assembly. <coughs> so we can name this like test or something like that. And there's other options too, as you saw. So let's say we want to change some stuff. We can actually go and We could actually, let's say I wanted to add one more. I'll do that one more time. And we can see what the other options really do. I'll do another array. So you have sign elements, display indexes, and then indexes are decimal, hexadecimal, octal. But that's how I've just used it, is by default like that. So we define our own struct. So now in order to use the struct, you just go over here, and this is the part where it gets kind of tricky, because it's like, where do you actually try to define this at all? So we know we have to look at where the struct gets loaded. We know that the struct's getting loaded here, because this is right after the call to malloc, and that's where the actual memory is that's going to be used to store the struct. So we know that the struct is getting placed inside of EAX, and we know that EAX is being used to actually reference the struct. So what we really want to do is we want to indicate that this is the beginning of the struct and then all these other offsets are, are, are members of the struct. So we can click EAX here and we can hit the T key on the keyboard. And see it gives us the option of now populating it with our new members that we've listed here of either of those. 
So I'm going to go ahead and use the person name because that's what it actually is. Now, the tricky part here is to know that Ida doesn't automatically populate the rest of the struct like I thought it would. So what I thought would happen was as soon as I set person name, it would say, oh, hey, well, if this is person name up here, then this must be, or then, then the rest of this, this must be hair color. And then this must be age down here. But it doesn't do that. <coughs> Excuse me. You actually have to manually label it all yourself. And then at that point, from that from that point on, Ida should pick it up. So this is actually still person name. So you could go here and hit T on that, and then go here and hit T on that, and pick name. Now, this part looks a little bit tricky. We're not going to label that. But instead, we're going to label here, hit T. Actually, we're going to label it right there. So see, that was a little bit tricky because I tried to label it down here where it actually says brown, and it's not going to pick up on that. See, it's, it's, it only gives me the option of person name. And the reason why is because Ida can't detect it without an offset on it. And so since we are technically offsetting EAX here, even though we're not doing it with D word pointer EAX plus something, we are adding 38H and EAX, Ida picks up on that fact that that it's possible that that's an offset for a structure. So if we hit T on this line, now we have the option to put person hair color in there. So you hit OK. Now we this makes a lot more sense. So now we're putting person or putting brown into person hair color. Um, let me see if I can label it here. I don't think I can, but so it won't let me actually label it when it's directly on the register. So let's see what it, what it lets me do here. Again, it won't let me. So now if I go here to EA, e, ESP plus 1C, I can, in fact, call this name just to make things look a little bit better because we are, again, referring to the beginning of that structure. So it looks a little bit confusing because it looks like we're messing with the name a lot, but really the name is the same thing as the beginning of the structure, and that's the reason why it's being referred to like that. And then now let's see here, if we if we hit T, since it's EAX plus 34, and we're putting a 43 in there, it is going to pick up the fact that we're looking at age. So at this point, the program should make a little bit more sense and at least we have a general idea of where things are. And same way if I go here, if I hit T here, remember 1C um, is referring to name. And if I hit T here, plus 34 is referring to age. Again, we're referring back to name. Then we're going back to hair color. And then we're going back to name again. And then we're going, so, so yeah, this would not be part of the, our struct because this is a different area in memory. So that's how you can label a structure inside of Ida manually, a C style structure. It is useful for you to keep track of when you're reverse engineering, but as you can see, it's not an immediately apparent and automatic thing. You have to actually go and do it unless Ida automatically detects it. Um, for some reason, Ida was able to detect that one as soon as I typed a name in, but I also showed you how you can manually go in there and edit it. And you might have to mess with it too, because as you see here, Ida um, placed some of the, it, it detected some of the padding it looks like, whereas when we when we added ours, we did not. So you could add your own undefined bytes in there to make it accurate. So that's what I wanted to show here. Um, it was a little bit confusing at first because, again, I thought that it would automatically label and figure out the rest of the offsets, but it really doesn't. So hope that helped. And check out the final video in the series to see what happens down here just before we leave the function.